everyone, me and Sweet Thought Treasure Hum, and welcome back to the channel, and this is Bible Time with me. This is what I understand about the Bible, how I'm learning about the Bible, and some beautiful things. <laughs> and yes, I do use lipstick because my lips are dry, and I've always been that way. It has nothing to do with not drinking enough water. Why I put that in there? Only God knows. Not me. God uses everything. So, today, we're going to study the name Jehovah Jireh. And it means the Lord will provide. So, I've got websites up and everything that I'm looking at over here that I will put links down below and everything. But it says, the Lord will provide. And Abraham and Isaac gave God that name. In Genesis 22. Yes, I could have that pulled up on the computer. I like using my Bible. It's just something about having it in your hands. All right, Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. If a man shall steal an ox, well, that is not what I thought. So, why did they sit there and say Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 and 2? I have no idea. But we shall go find this. Because that has nothing to do with. Now, somebody's put the wrong chapters and verse on here. And everyone I've seen, chapter says chapter 22, verse 2. That has nothing to do with Abraham and Isaac. So now I'm going to have to do some digging. Because, um, yeah, that has, ah, let's see here. And this says chapter 22, verse 14. So that's, well, I think it would be helpful if I was in Genesis and not Exodus. <laughs> As my son would say, user error. Because I was in Genesis and then all of a sudden the Bible had flipped to Exodus. Oh yeah, that's funny. Anyway, here we are. Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom you love, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the, and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with the donkey and I will lay and I the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you so right there he already knows you know God told him to go sacrifice Isaac 
But he sat there and told them we will, that we will come again to you. Meaning that him and Isaac will come back to them. So, speaking in faith about what's going to happen and everything, Abraham didn't know at that time. He knew that God told him to sacrifice Isaac. But Abraham also spoke, saying that they both would be back to the servants. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it up upon Isaac his son. And he took fire in his hand and a knife. And when and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt, for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. So at that time, there was no lamb or anything for the burnt offering. So I'm quite sure Isaac was sitting there going, What's going on? How all these thoughts going through his mind and everything. And I'm quite sure Abraham had thoughts too going through his mind. You know, Lord, you gave me the son. What, you know, now you're going to take me when you take him away. He's also saying, I trust you, Lord. I know what you're going to do. You know, you're going to provide. And they came to a place which God told him of, and Abraham built him an altar there. And they laid the wood in order, and bound his son, Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou not, hast not withhold thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns. And Abraham went, off, went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of a son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven a second, the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, the end blessing I will bless thee, and multiply multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand of which is upon the sea seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of the, his enemies. And so right right there God's promises of provision. Um to me him you know it says the Lord prov provide he also protected them also, you know, as we were stu as been studying Psalms 91, you know, that God said he will protect you from the snare of the fowler. So could that be part of that also? I don't know, I was way in David's time when he wrote that, but then God did protect Isaac from the snare, from being sacrificed. And so God provided a way of escape for Isaac. He provided that lamb. And, you know, we look at things today. And as we're going through things, and it's like, how? But then, you know, that's when faith comes in. And then you can understand the Lord will provide that's Jehovah Jireh. And like I said before, in those times when things are going on, I don't, I haven't memorized the names of God. I may know them, may well say them sometimes when I'm thinking about it, but the Lord, the Lord will provide Jehovah Jireh, the Lord. So in just saying, Lord, help me, Lord, provide for me. Lord, deliver me. You're basically saying 
and Jehovah Jireh because we don't speak, I don't speak Hebrew. I would like to know it, but I don't speak Hebrew, but I can say Lord because I do that a lot. Definitely a lot. It would be getting into bed and I'll be moving around and I'm like, Lord, have mercy. You know, with things we said growing up and everything. And, but he knows our heart when we say that. He knows exactly what we're feeling and what we're doing. No matter what anybody else is around you, what they think. They can think whatever they want to. That's between you and God. You, When you say, God help me, Lord help me, he knows what's here and here. And it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Let them think what they want to think. If, you know. I know people who cuss up a storm and everything else and turn around and can cry to the Lord and then tell them to help them. They've been through a lot, you know. We don't necessarily understand why somebody uses foul words or whatever or have an attitude or, you know, can be depressed. <laughs> you know, people go through things and some people don't know how to come out of it. Um, don't know where to turn. You know, and yeah, medicine does help, but there's one that helps more than anything else, and that's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So right there, Lord and Savior, Lord, He is your provider for everything, um, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. And I just posted something on Instagram, and it was um. It's Joseph Prince, and he was talking about, you know, how do you see God? Do you see Jesus? Do you see the Lord as your Jehovah Jireh? Do you see him as your provider? Are you looking at other things? Are you looking at the news? Are you, you know, what the, the world's going on right now? <laughs> or do you see him? Okay, that's going on, but you know, Lord, I'm going to trust you to bring me through this. And then God says, that he will provide a way when there is no way. When the temptation is too much to handle, he will provide a way for you to make a way of escape. And then he also promises a way of escape from your enemies. And yes, it does. And this is the part that gets to me sometimes. He tells you to pray to get away from your enemies and he will provide, they will be your footstool. And then he also tells you to pray for them. I'm like, Okay, Lord, <laughs> you confused me, but I'm going to trust you. I'm going to say both. You know, I'm going to say both. Deliver me from my enemies. Deliver me from that bad that happened through the last year. You know, I claim victory over that. Um, but then I'm going to pray, bless those who hurt me and curse at me, you know? <laughs> Yeah, if you, um, you know, so I see some of my stuff that I, you know, post, I find, you know, I, I wake up in the morning, I do my devotions, I have things I say over me and my family, and I'm like, Lord, show me today what you need me to know. And it could be, I need to encourage somebody or text somebody, hey, how you doing? What you doing? Um, are you okay today? Or it could be a word for me that <laughs> he's taking care of everything. Don't worry. You keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. And uh, that was one thing I, from last night. You know, don't, we always hear, don't quit, don't quit. But when it comes to, you know, you're searching and just a thirst for the Lord and you just want to get closer to him he will give that to you in one way or another that is providing for you he will always provide for us physically mentally emotionally spiritually and financially if just walk with him and trust him that is one thing I've learned uh, in this past year from this time last year to this time till now to trust him to seek him. Um, if one lesson has come out of this that I have learned is I already have what everything I need. You know, 
thinking that I needed or missing out on being married. Um, having a, a man around, as you could say. <laughs> and I was I like, um, when I was going to get my MRI, I sat down and had a nice talk with the Lord. And I was like, okay, I learned what I, I know what you want me to learn. That I have everything I need. Jesus is my Boaz. I don't need an earthly Boaz. I have a heavenly Boaz. I have a heavenly provider. He is a creator of the universe. He made the earth. But how can we think for a second that he can't sit there and give us everything that we need? He does. And I'm like, that's why I have posted um, on Instagram and some friends that I'm taking the next six months. I am doing what he tells us to tell, told me to do. To go in the world and preach the gospel. Teach. Preach. Something that I... Told y'all in another video. I was 13. I wanted to be a missionary. Life didn't turn out that way. I didn't go in the mission field. I'm in the mission field now. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I'll, you know, through friends. Uh, like I said, I'll, you know, I've always been that positive person. You know, when someone sits there, comes after you know, my mom. We, we just put it that way. Because ain't nobody now. <laughs> The only one that does it to me is me, I guess. But, you know, my mom was always a negative, pessimistic person. And I wasn't. <laughs> she get on my nerves. I get on her nerves. <laughs> but to me, I'd rather be positive. I've been down and negative and it does no good not at all and uh, but coming back to myself and how the Lord made me has really given me a lot of peace um, and the peace that he knows that like I say he is he will provide he's Jehovah Jireh he's going to provide for me a way of escape of whatever happened what things we go through he is there providing every single step. I'm going to live today for today. Not worry about tomorrow. Not worry about next week and school starts or this is going to happen or that is going to happen. Because he will provide. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope this has been a blessing to you. And if you like, come back for more. Because we're going to go to the next thing. I don't know. I have a list that I know of. of Jehovah Jireh. Then maybe we may go to Jehovah. You have to come back and find out the next time what name I'm going to use. Work. <laughs> name we're going to study on. So if you haven't liked, subscribe, clean that bell for notifications. And we'll see you next time on Our Treasure Home.